WatchOS 11.2 is officially out with a surprising number of new features and changes for the Apple Watch and in this video I'm simply going to be showing you everything that's new. On my Apple Watch device right here we begin with the first app that received a significant change and it's this camera remote app now this one works hand in hand with an iphone so if you have an iphone that has been updated to ios 18 and newer and you go to the video mode whether it's landscape or portrait whichever mode you are in it has received a significant update by allowing you to pause the video once you've began recording so if i hit record right there you can see now on the left hand side i have an option to be able to pause my video and if if I want to reframe my shot or put it somewhere else and then begin recording or resume the recording again, I can do that. Before this was available, but we never had the pause option and the iPhone on iOS 18 added the ability to be able to pause and resume the video on iOS 18, but the Apple Watch remote app never heard that and it's good to see that Apple has now brought it over for the Apple Watch remote app and it will help creators that are solo be able to frame their shot without having to capture multiple footages or clips by being able to pause and resume that one clip and of course if you press the middle one it ends the recording and you still have the ability to do that whether you are using the rear camera or the front camera now this is my front camera as you see my phone was just laying on its back if i begin recording i still have the ability to pause and then resume or take a picture or if i want to end it i can do that which was always existing but the pause is a new feature that has been added another change that this update introduces especially if you are a surfer or if you like chasing the waves has to do with the title application watchOS 11.2 now supports title conditions and coastal locations in the tides app for china so now if china is a location or a potential candidate for you if you are looking forward to going surfing or chasing the waves you can now be able to add it as a location and now you'll be able to see the different waves conditions and you have the ability to also continue in weather and in maps as well which is something that's good if you recently bought a new apple watch be it the apple watch ultra 2 the apple watch series 10 or even the apple watch series 9 and you updated to watch os 11.2 while it was in beta and on beta 1 and beta 2 there was an issue that caused a lot of people headaches when it comes to the battery to be specific the battery maximum health capacity for the series 9 series 10 and ultra 2 dropped after users updated to the first and second beta but then during the testing phases it seems like a number of people complained and apple resolved an issue that caused the battery health maximum capacity for users of those apple watch devices to drop significantly from 100% on a new Apple watch such as the ultra 2 from 100 to about 95 this one that you're seeing is the Apple watch ultra 1 it is on uh, 89% of course and this is the correct maximum health capacity but if you were worried about um, updating to watchOS 11.2 because of that issue I'll be happy to let you know that Apple has quickly resolved it as it was one of the issues that a bunch of people reached out to me and they also complained about and gave feedback to Apple. If you are in the United States I'll be happy to let you know that if you use the wallet application for your identification now users in New Mexico have the ability to add their driver's license and their IDs to the Apple Wallet app on the iPhone and on the Apple Watch providing a digital version of the license that can be used instead of a physical card in some location now a lot of states already support this in the United States the latest one to be added of course being New Mexico and a lot of those states are exclusive just to the United States I'm hoping to see Apple push this out to more countries and regions. I'm in Canada, of course, that's why you don't see my um, 
digital driver's license or i don't have the ability to be able to add this but i also believe that this needs provincial or federal approval before it's approved in canada but if you are in canada and you need this then let's push for it and give feedback to apple and also reach out to those in authority to see if this is something that we can get it will definitely reduce the amount of weight and cards that we have to carry in our wallets and thereby reducing the weight with regards to health and fitness i'll be happy to let you know that this update actually brings a bit of an improvement to fitness especially in a bid to try and help you and motivate you to stay more active by introducing new awards that you can now be able to achieve so on your iphone when you open up the fitness application just like this and then you go for on the award section and select show all you can see they've added a new award such as this that says all rings close and it will show you a count of how many rings you closed up to date and how many you still have to go and a few of other rings and awards have been updated to help you stay active and close and be able to achieve different awards continuing on the lines of workouts and fitness especially if you have or if you are using an apple watch connected to a cycling equipment you will now be able to see rpm on the screen of all those things that are connected but then of course you do need a compatible cycling device and the apple watch will also be able to show you the rpm on the screen while you are doing that cycling activity and of course it will show you the rpm or the revs per minute to show you how fast you'll be cycling and at the end of the workout it will give you like an average to be able to show you how you did while the workout transpired if you are interested in this bike that I'm showing right here, this is the USO G1M Plus bike. It's actually really good value for money. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and I'll leave links to it in the description of this video fitness changes actually don't end right there. We have more changes when it comes to fitness and this is also in compliance with the latest iOS 18.2 version. So when you open up the shortcut app, once you update to iOS 18.2 and you have a supported Apple Watch that supports watchOS 11.2, you also be able to see that Apple has added more actions that you can be able to add in terms of shortcuts to help you trigger different functions faster. So now you have open fitness settings, search fitness plus and workout log health sample, log workout workout start workout open award open session history open trends open trophy case and open view with the previous update on ios 18.1 and watchOS 11.1 we did have some of these fitness shortcuts but now apple has added about eight new different ones right here and it should be able to help you trigger different functions both on your apple watch and on your iphone to be able to begin a session or log something faster unfortunately this update doesn't introduce any new watch faces but right here you can see one of my exclusive one of one watch face hmht exclusive and this one is actually not a new watch face it's more of a bug because after i updated to this watch os 11.2 it actually caused my modular as you can see this is the modular dual watch face initially it was showing good I put my Apple Watch on the charger overnight, but the morning after it's been stuck on just like this. I can go to like a different watch face like this, for example, the Unity Bloom works good and is okay. But if I go back to this modular jewel, this is what I'm seeing, a black screen with uh, the current time and it's showing the seconds, which is a, I mean, it's a minimalistic looking watch face, but it's not by choice. It seems to be more of a bug or a fault with this watch face on watchOS 11.2. Let me know when you go into your modular duo and you select the same watch face, if you are experiencing an issue or a bug, just like what I'm experiencing right here, I don't mind it. It just looks cool but not by choice now 
Another watch face you might want to keep an eye on is the Snoopy watch face because the animations are continuously being updated. We recently saw new four animations on Snoopy. Also recently Snoopy began doing Halloween animations and at the same time as we enter the holiday season, Snoopy is going to be doing more holiday themed animations as well. And that's something that just runs in the background. It doesn't have to be limited to a software update and it's something that you might want to know or keep an eye on as you see how snoopy adapts to the different environments activities you have in your calendar or the weather among other things another unfortunate change that this update seems to introduce is that it seems like apple removed the hold side button and then digital crown to force quit an app if you swipe and remove the app from the multitask window once reopened it seems to start afresh similarly to ios just a minor change worth mentioning if you have a tesla car i'll be happy to let you know that tesla has officially release their tesla app for the apple watch and when you open it it's going to tell you to sign in the tesla app on your iphone but if you go to the apple watch app store and then search for the tesla application it actually shows up and it tells you all the new features and changes and what it can do so i'll just search for tesla right here and then click search right there and you can see it shows up this is not a third party application it's actually one that's developed by tesla and it had been trending just in case you didn't know and when you click on it it actually does a lot of things so charging progress heating or cooling your car local unlock from afar locate your vehicle with direction track its movement send an address from your favorite to start allow your passenger to quickly control media flashlights beep horn among other things as well as some on your car these are all things that you can do on your apple watch and you can update your vehicle software from your apple watch this is actually crazy the amount of things that you can do on this tesla apple watch application now i have the tesla apple watch app the next thing I probably need is a Tesla itself and that's the hardest thing to get. This update doesn't actually have a lot of issues that have been reported. One issue that I've seen a number of users mention is that when you connect your Apple Watch to a charger and it reaches 100%, usually there's a notification that pops up either on your iPhone or on your Apple Watch to tell you that, hey, your watch has been charged up to 100%. I'm on iOS 18.2 and my watch has been updated of course to the latest version but that notification is not showing up it seems to be a bug some sort but at the same time it's not a serious issue that will cause you or make you not update your Apple watch to the latest version but just to put it out there if you rely on a notification to know that your watch is fully charged then you might not be able to get it after you update it it seems to be buggy and this is not sending that same notification one of the things that i wish this update allowed us to do was to create custom smart stack design for custom uh, like profiles or custom focus mode that would take place when a focus mode is initiated it works good the existing one but it will be a good to have and at the same time it would be nice to have some sort of siri animation update this one since the apple watch the iphone have been all updated to this new animation that looks like this it just makes the one on the apple watch look a bit dated we don't need to have the apple intelligence features but it will be good to have the animation updated as well and keep in mind that since this update just came out there's going to be some apple security security releases that are going to be updated soon so keep an eye out on this page this is the apple security releases it's a publicly available page and you can search it up and find it and you'll be able to read and see what are the common vulnerabilities and exposures that this update patches the last thing i should highlight about this update is that during my update and testing process since i've been testing this for almost two months i encountered a massive three gigs update and that's not something 
does its normal it's almost as if one is going from watch os 10 to watch os 11 usually when you are jumping a whole version of watch os that's when you get massive update sizes just like that but the new features here don't warranty that big of a software update itself and just to put it out there you can see on my apple watch ultra one i have about 10.6 gigs of used storage out of 32 gigs and you can see how much watch os is taking right there it's about average it's um when a software update takes a big update or space like that it simply just overrides the previous one but yeah it was kind of interesting and you can see how uh different applications are taking up space and i'll just go all the way to the bottom just to show you some of the other applications and i just had to put it out there just in case you get a large update size that yes it also happened to me but it just overrides whatever the previous version was now during my testing also the battery life and performance from the time i've been using it seems to be about average it doesn't bump it up a notch or take it back a notch it seems to be average and yes my battery maximum health capacity is correct like i mentioned if you have a device that was affected those issues have been resolved now basically that's about it for me when it comes to this version of watch os let me know what you think about this video if you liked it definitely give it a like and let me know in the comments below what's your favorite update feature that this one has to offer and at the same time if you're going to be updating to it from the get-go right there and there my name is Ben and I'm signing off. Peace.